All right, what's up everybody? So if you haven't been able to tell, I am recording in a new space right now. And to be honest, it is less than ideal compared to what I was recording in last time. I had the walls treated in the other room and the window was blocked so that there was no light coming in, disrupting the white balance of this video. So if you guys notice that the video seems a little bit off, that is why I'm gonna be steadily working on this room and trying to bring it back up to the standards that you guys were used to seeing with my other content. And for those of you who couldn't even tell hell or don't even care great anyhow so that's pretty much why i haven't been on youtube for these last few days i had some ideas planned that i wanted to film but i couldn't really get to it because i just been moving all of my equipment into this room and it took several days to get everything set up to the way that i had it in the other recording space i was in it was just very very time consuming but here we are we're back at it i got everything set up and I'm bringing you guys a new piece of gear that I just got in the mail and I can already tell this is something that a lot of you guys are going to be excited to check out and dive into with me. You guys have been recommending this thing to me for a very long time and truth be told I have had my eyes on this piece of gear for a while now and I've wanted to include it in my setup and I just recently pulled the trigger on buying it and now it is finally in my vocal chain. So if you guys have been following me on Instagram, link in the description, you would have seen that I had ordered the Art Pro VLA 2. The first time around I went to order it, it actually got canceled they actually ran out of stock so then I went over to eBay and I was able to get my hands on one brand new and it finally just came in yesterday evening and here we are testing it out for the first time and you guys are going to be able to get my overall first thoughts and impressions on this absolutely stunning beautiful piece of equipment so yes the art pro vla2 i've actually had my eyes on it for a while now i would say around the time that i bought the mpa2 i was considering picking up the vla2 for my vocal chain but i decided not to because i had the kt2a and at the time i was very much satisfied with the results i was getting by running the mpa2 into the kt2a the thing that really sold me on the vla2 was the variable attack release and ratio the fact that i can customize that to what i need specifically was just an absolute game changer. I love the products from Art, so I figured this would be a great addition for my vocal chain considering I'm using the MPA2. Don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that the KT2A or any other LA2A clone out there is bad or not going to suffice. Absolutely not. It is a stunning, beautiful piece of equipment. And to be honest, I don't see myself getting rid of the KT2A now that I have the VLA2. I just think that the versatility with the VLA2 definitely makes it worthy of adding to your vocal chain, regardless of the fact that you have the KT2A or a LA2A clone. The VLA has so much more versatility, in my opinion, that it does not hurt to add it to your setup, even though you have a KT2A or 1176, for example. Now, what I wanted to do was just kind of show you guys what you can do with this thing, because it is, like I said, very versatile. You can use this thing on instruments, or in my case, vocals in particular. That is pretty much all I record. I don't record instruments. So for vocals, this is what I'm going to be using it for. And you can do a lot of different styles of compression using this thing, or you can run it on your master bus channel and use it for mixing and mastering. It's just versatile. I mean, there's really no other way of putting it. It's just, it can handle so much. It has a wide variety of applications. Let me go ahead and break down some of the settings that I am currently running on this thing in case you guys are enjoying the amount of compression that you are hearing right now on my voiceover. So right now I have my attack set on five milliseconds and then on my release, I have it on the fastest setting possible, which is 150 milliseconds. As for the ratio, I have it on a four to one ratio. I find that a anywhere from a two to one to a four to one for a voiceover or even rap vocals, your lead rap vocals, that to me is the perfect sweet spot for compression. For voiceover and rap vocals, they're pretty much identical for the most part. Uh, take that with a grain of salt, of course, but they're, you know, very similar in the, in the fact that they can have very identical attack and releases. So I usually like running on rap vocals the same that I would run on my voiceover, if that makes any sense. So my attack is on five milliseconds, release 150 milliseconds, and my ratio is on a four to one. I love it. It just has a very broadcast podcast sounding compression. 
and uh, it just really pulls everything out of my vocal and makes everything sound much more in your face sounding, uh, to put it into layman's terms. Now that you guys have heard what my voice sounds like with the compressor in, what I wanna do is now bypass it and then bring it back in so that you can get a very direct comparison of how this compressor is affecting my voiceover. So let's go ahead and bypass it. This is now what it sounds like with the compressor turned off. So right now what we're pretty much getting is the Art Pro MPA2 running into the VLA2, bypassing the compressor, and then that is going into the Apollo Solo, which is then being recorded into my DAW. It's going to sound a lot more dynamic and definitely not as linear as when I have the compressor on. So let's go ahead and bring the compressor back in and you can hear for yourself what it is doing to my vocals. So here is with the compressor on. It definitely does impact the way that your voice sounds. And honestly, I think it just brings the most out of the recording. I love recording with compression. I never record with EQ. However, I do record with compression every single time I'm tracking into my DAW, whether that be recording a vocal for a song or just doing my voiceover for YouTube. You really cannot go wrong with doing a little bit of compression into your DAW. It's really going to honestly save you a lot of work when you go into mixing your vocals or processing your vocals for your voiceover, whatever it is. Having a compressor in your vocal chain is not a bad idea at all. The way that I have my compressor set up in my vocal chain is so that it's mostly just impacting the transients of the recording. What you're going to notice is that when you don't have the compressor on, there's going to be points in the recording where it all of a sudden shoots up four, five, six decibels even, and it's not going to sound as consistent with the rest of the recording. Having the compressor in the chain is going to tame those loud transients so that in the end, when I go to normalize the recording for YouTube and get the most out of the recording, everything is going to sound much more linear and not as dynamic. Now, that can be an issue at times. Some people prefer to have the most dynamics in their recording, and that's totally fine. It is all subjective at the end of the day. I like the way that having a compressor on vocal sounds. You can hear it immediately when somebody is using a compressor and not using one, and to me, it just has a very radio podcast friendly sounding uh you know tonality i should say so to me i prefer that i like that sound and if it saves me a little bit of work in post-processing absolutely i'm going to be doing it in my vocal chain and not to mention you're running it through physical hardware which does add a little bit of sonic characteristics so i love the way that this thing is sounding so far so far i'm very very happy with the quality that i'm getting out of this vocal chain. Now this is with me just recording with very mild compression this entire time I've been using a four to one ratio. What I want to show you though is that you can absolutely squash your recording if you want to, if that is something that you're going for. I know a lot of people like to do a second take where they will squash the vocal with compression and then kind of blend it into their original lead vocal, which is a great, great tactic. I love that. I do that pretty much all the time on my lead vocals. So you can do the same exact thing on here. If you just increase the ratio all the way up to a 20 to one, unbelievable. And then you just squash the recording, add much more gain reduction, and you're gonna get a just really beefy sound. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna bring my ratio all the way down to 20 to one. It's gonna sound a lot more quiet right now. So we're going to have to, let's see, let's get more gain reduction. So. Here's what we got going on. We are at minus 25 for the gain reduction, minus 25, minus 30, a lot more quiet. So let's go ahead and bring that up now. Okay, so now we're getting right back up to where we were with the original recording. We wanna be right around minus 25 LUFS short term. So here we are, minus 25, minus 24 LUFS short term. You can hear it right away. It is very, very squashed, very beefy sounding. And if you blend this into the original lead vocal that you had taken with a lighter compression, it helps to make your vocal sit out so much better in the mix and just adds so much character to it. Again, this is a very, very versatile compressor. You can do a ton with this thing. Let's go ahead and bring it back to the original 
ratio that I had it at. So yeah, what I want to know is what do you guys think about the VLA 2? And if you already have one yourself, what are some of your favorite settings to run on it? I'm very excited to jump into this thing even further and bring you guys a much more in-depth analysis as we go and the more we learn on this unit. I just, I think it has so much potential and we're just barely scraping the surface so far. So we have a lot to learn about the VLA 2. And of course, you guys will be there right with me on the journey to unlocking the full potential out of this vocal chain. Guys, if you haven't already yet, be sure to check out my Patreon down below. I have the link in the description. I have all of my benefits listed on my page, and I had set the cost on my Patreon to a flat, affordable budget that accommodates everybody. So I do highly encourage you to check it out and see if it is something that interests you. Anyways, guys, that is going to wrap it up. If you haven't already yet, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon beside it so that you can stay notified for any of my upcoming videos. With that being said, I will see you all in my next one. Take care, everybody. Peace out.